Hi everyone and welcome to our growth group series, His Story. We're going to spend the next eight weeks working our way through the entire Bible, exploring God's glorious plan for His world. Now this series is based heavily on Vaughan Roberts' excellent book, God's Big Picture. I'd highly recommend getting hold of a copy, as well as Graham Goldsworthy's book, Gospel and Kingdom. Uh, they, they are wonderful resources. If you want to dig a little bit deeper into the unfolding storyline of the Bible, grab hold of them. Now, why do we need a Bible overview? Well, even though the Bible is the best-selling book of all time, Bible knowledge is on the decrease. As culture becomes more and more secular, meaning it's moving away from Christian principles and teaching, many of our neighbors and friends have very little or no knowledge of the Bible. And maybe that's you. You might not have grown up in a, in a Christian home, and so the Bible might feel a little overwhelming, a little foreign. Well, this series is going to help you piece together the big storyline of the Bible and then give you a framework to then build on. But it's not just for the unchurched. Many Christians also have no idea how the Bible fits together. You might be familiar with some of the big events like the Exodus, uh, David and Goliath, Jesus' miracles, the the start of the church. But you might be confused how they all click into the, the big plan of God. And we see this often in the way we think of the two testaments in the Bible. We've split the Bible into two, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Many Christians, and maybe you today, might think that the Bible contains two plans. That God tries plan A in the Old, and when that doesn't work, he then has to institute plan B. But in this course, we're going to see that the Bible is one grand story. Yes, it's comprised of 66 books, 39 in the Old, which are in Hebrew, and 27 in the New, which are in Greek. But they all work together. And we'll see that through this series, this one book will point us to one central figure, Jesus Christ. Without the Old Testament, we'd have no idea who Jesus is. Some of the titles we see that he gets is Jesus the Lamb, the Son of David, the Son of Man. All of them find their meaning in the Old Testament. We'd also have no idea why he would need to come. A little bit like uh, getting the spoiler of a movie. We'd have the solution without understanding the problem And I think this is where the contemporary church kind of finds itself, focusing exclusively on the New Testament. And to be fair, the Old Testament can be quite daunting. You know, there's talking donkeys, oceans parting. At one point, a hand appears and writes on a wall. Many don't know what to make of those stories. But we do need them to understand who Jesus is and why he came. Similarly, though, if you focus on the Old Testament without the New Testament, you'll have the problem without the solution. So it's like watching a murder mystery and just before you find out who did it, it switches off. And that's a frustration because did they get caught? What happened in the end? Um, The old without the new leaves us frustrated and hopeless. The Old Testament speaks of great promises and the New Testament shows us how they are fulfilled. Both are needed and both are necessary. So buckle up and get ready to see a powerful God working through history, his story, and a God who is still working. Now, each study will begin with a short video like this one, where I'll take us through a piece of history. You'll then break up into your groups and work through a passage or a few passages together and discuss what God is teaching you about his plan for the world. Now, as we get going, I want to introduce you to a theme that we'll keep coming back to through this series, and that is the kingdom of God. Jesus' teaching focused heavily on the kingdom of God, and it's a helpful paradigm with which to understand the Bible's story. Now, any kingdom has three essential components. It needs a king who rules, subjects who listen, and a land, a space where they live. And the same is true for God's kingdom. We can define it as God's people in God's place and under God's rule or blessing. Each week we'll come back to these things as we see God's kingdom established, how it all breaks down, and how he is working to rebuild what was lost through a king, breaking into our world to rescue us and to invite us into a new eternal kingdom. Today, though, we're going back to the very beginning, to the start of it all, the creation of the world, the pattern of the kingdom. In your groups, open up your Bibles to Genesis 1 and 2. 